Hello, folks. Once again, it is late, and I am doing this to burn time, basically, <laughs> when I can't do anything more stressful. So, let's continue our adventure in the Shadow of Darkness to see what that means. Because that seems kind of redundant and incredibly vague. So let's see what lies within the Shadow of Darkness. Lin Fleet, have you investigated the mysterious La Habre? I'm afraid there is no rest for the weary, Nyardber. We must delve further into the motivations of the masked man, the Asian, known as La Habrea. This is an ideal moment to do so, while our hands are not bound dealing with another primal. At present, we know little and less about the Asians, only that destruction follows in their wake. Sorry, you've been fighting them how long, and literally all you know is destruction follows in their wake? Okay. I should not be surprised if these beings are behind the chaos that racks the realm. If my fears prove to be reality, we must do all in our power to stop them. Earlier, I sent word to each grand company to solicit cooperation. The immortal flames responded to the effect that they have information on a potential sighting. This is intelligence that we can ill afford to ignore. Go speak with Flame Commander Swift at the Hall of Flames in Ulda to inquire further. How you go about the investigation thereafter, I leave wholly to your discretion. But whatever you do, never forget that we are dealing with the unknown. You cannot take too many precautions. Be safe, Nyardred. Uh, so we're back to split audio recording, I think, so I should be able to, like, cut out little lumps and bumps like I used to. But also, we're hopefully back to a balance where it seems like the game sound and the me sound isn't, like, super out of whack. Which is really to say, I look forward to finding what third thing I wasn't accounting for that is now broken. Perhaps it'll be in the subtitles now. Thanks, me. Okay, so we're headed to Ulda. You know, before we do that, though, let's go teach our feisty little chocobo to pick fights. Because that's something that I've been meaning to do, and we kept being, like, sorta nearby repeatedly. So let's actually go out of our way to do this. Okay, so we're back at Buskaron's Druthers. Um, I'm pretty sure that it's to the south of... Oh my god, that is a big gremlin. Hello, Mr. Gremlin. I'm glad you're just kind of chill, despite having malice in your name. I'll just leave you alone, and may that be someone else's problem. That's a spooky pit. Anyway, I'm headed down south to find whoever it is that I need to talk to about a big choke. That is a big deer. That's just a normal enemy. Oh boy. Supplies. All right, good luck with that, bud. Yeah, so I'm showing the trip down here. Oh, that's cute. Um, because uh, this is a new area. Unlock the trip will keep. Sink to the ether eye. <coughs> Marvel with this very, very fat cat. 
and then talk to this person who knows about training chocobos. The unmistakable smell of chocobo clings to you, adventurer. Would I be correct in assuming that you have your own trusty steed? I thought so. Now tell me, is your bird battle trained? If not, if not, you might consider seeking the advice of Luclo over at Bench Branch Meadows. I knew it. <laughs> this guardian native is something of a prodigy in all matters concerning our fe fine feathered friends. He should be able to help you attain greater affinity with your bird. Cool. I'll teleport there shortly, but I'm kind of curious what's up with the Mughal. Because I don't think we're ever going to do that particular quest line in this version. Oh, that's a player. Okay. Well, I have served Ryo since she was a little she was a little girl, no bigger than me, Kupo. She's matured much since the calamity. Her brother Arun, on the other hand. You're Kane Sena's siblings, right? I am Ryo Sena, a, pa a Pajal of Gridania, as you might discern, discern with my horns on my head. My name may be unfamiliar to you, but doubtless you know of my sister. That would be Kane Sena, Elder Seed Seer of Gridania, and Supreme Commander of the Order of the Twin Adder. Together, we are known as the Three Seed Seers. My sister, myself, and our younger brother, Arun Sena. Among, our, among my myriad titles, I am proud to call myself a practitioner of white magic, which is the art of healing. This is an art for which we have no small need. The Twelveswood has been made to suffer unspeakable pains, from the calamity to unending conflicts with the beast tribes, to exploitation at the hands of our own people. It is my duty, my calling, to provide succor, and I do it gladly. And back to Bent Branch. Yeah, if you do the White Mage quests, she's like the White Mage teacher. Let me just quest giver. That's probably a more accurate word. Good evening to you, Nyogbert. Is there something you need? You wish to have your chocobo trained in combat? Oh, this is no small request you make. Riding your bird is one thing. Asking you to take hurts in your name is quite another. I will help train your chocobo, but on the promise that you will never unduly expose it to danger. Do I have your word? I will never expose it to any danger. I would not also expose myself. I know that's a low bar, but it's still. <laughs> Very well. To begin, we will need a bunch of gizzle greens. You have my leave to pick one from out the fields yonder. Return here when you have it. Let's go pick some not quite cabbage. I just chose a starter Pokemon without knowing anything about what those were. Is this cabbage different from the other two cabbages, Lukla? Have you acquired the greens? Leafy greens originating from the Near East. If they were any fresher, they would still be in the ground. Aww. <laughs> Superb. We should get straight to it. Doubtless you already know this, but Chocobos are highly fond of Gizzle Greens. They love the leafy vegetables so much, in fact, that they will completely forget their fears in the face of danger. Thus, by feeding your birds the greens, you can prevail upon it to fight beside you. And then, once called, it will be up to you to direct its actions as you see fit. You will find that your chocobo innately responds to a number of general commands. Give your bird an order, and it will act accordingly to the best of its ability. This simple yet effective methodology was developed by the Fortem family, one of the, one of the foremost houses in Ishgard. And that concludes your lesson. Of course, it is not enough to merely hear about a practice, one must venture forth and attempt it oneself. Summon your chocobo with a bunch of gizzle greens, and together make your way to Sorrelhaven. The broodses that prowl the area ought to be a suitable challenge for you and your companion. Put down three of them and return here. 
And lastly, by way of advice, I would recommend you keep an ample supply of Gizzle Greens on your person at all times. Our resident vendor will be able to provide you with as much as you can carry. Yeah. Yeah, who is your vendor? Who sells Gizzles? Is it you? Are you a vendor? I mentioned that Leia's egg is hatched. Oh, you didn't! We've yet to settle on a name, but the chick is healthy, spirited, and incurably inquisitive. She will receive the finest care, and she'll one day grow into an exceptional chocobo. I'm glad I oopsie did a little bit of extra dialogue there. Do you sell gizzle greens? No. Do you sell gizzle greens? No. Send me on quite the hunt here, Luca. Who is your vendor? Is it the vendor over there? Do you sell gizzle greens? You do! Alright, there we are. Kaba. Hell yeah. Hi there. Okay. So, if I remember correctly, I can go into this companion menu and then just put it in. How do I teach it things? We'll just leave it in free stance for now. It should attack the things I attack, I think. Okay. Time to head up that route again. Big bird, let's fight bigger birds. We got this, Kaiba. Watch out! Triple rank increases, you will earn skill points. These points can be used to acquire new companion specific actions and traits. There are three different skill trees you can choose for, for your Chocobo, Defender, Attacker, and Healer. Your Chocobo acquires his first skills from any of the trees, you also learn the tree's stance. Okay, yeah. Now you choose to use your Chocobo skill points is entirely up to you, but remember once an action or trait has been purchased, the purchase cannot be undone. Think about how you wish to use your Chocobo in battle and choose its path of progression wisely. I legitimately don't remember what I even gave mine originally. I probably just picked the DPS stance because I mean, basically every tank in this game is a gunbreaker. But the idea of having a healer chocobo is funny. Yeet! I like that, like, since the chocobo doesn't take damage from jumping, the idea is that, like, jumping off of a ledge is that high, just, like, crotches Nyardbert so hard that he goes down to one health. <laughs>
So you successfully negotiated your first few battles for your Chocobo. Well done. Tell me, how did it feel? Is it not supremely reassuring, fighting with your feathered companion? Your Chocobo can make up for your shortcomings, or build upon your strengths. Indeed, there are countless ways the two of you might complement one another. Because I cannot count to nine. <laughs> Through some experimentation, you'll come to find the approach that serves you best. Ah, before I forget, I have one last parting gift. A saddlebag for your Chocobo. Carrying Gizzle Greens about can be quite cumbersome. After all, and there should be significant room for your personal belongings should the needs ar arise. I pray it serves you well on your travels. Hell uh, yeah. More inventory space? Crush it. Oh shit, I should come back to this. Sorry, I... In my other character, I actually have a house now. So I can... Actually come do the, whatever this quest is. See the immortal flames. Oh, you're still dancing. Is this the same frog maid? I don't know. I don't remember if there were frog before. There was a bright green maid, Rogan, before. Commander Swift, greetings. Sorry that your uh, recruiter bungled that so badly. The masked man. Oh, you were coming on behalf of the Scions, of course. Yes, as, if, as we've already relayed to Lady Bonfilia, there has been a sighting of this rogue near about, uh, about Eastern Battleland. A brass blade stationed at Highbridge described him in detail when he alerted us to his suspicious activity. I would point you to the witness, but I'm afraid he died not two days ago, slain by a marauding horde of Queequren. Fate can be a cruel mistress. But do not be too quick to despair. Being situated on a trade route, Highbridge sees its fair share of travelers. Folk are always coming and going, and some among them may well have caught a glimpse of your target. You could do worse than to speak with a merchant named Hihibaru. The, the fellow is always starved for customers, and he's no doubt welcoming your attention, whether or not you have the coin or the mind to spend it. Uh, over there is where we could turn in our pugilist quests, but we're not going to do that right now. Because we're on a mission to go here. Oh, it's time to climb back out of Camp Drybone again. friendly bystander the other day who helped us out with all that kill just thought our name was fun <laughs> or if they're just like entirely full on good samaritan they saw a sprout and they're like yes today is your lucky day yard bird <laughs> adventurer. Whatever you seek, I, Hibaru, can provide it. Probably. You're after a masked man? Huh. Not sure I have one of those in stock. Oh, you're after a masked man. How did you say so sooner? Such an individual might have featured in one of the many rumors I've heard. If you linger a while, maybe you'll learn a thing or two, eh? 
Hihibara wants to help you find La Habrea. Maybe. <laughs> when the Order of Nodthal began excavating the ruins below, I had hopes that Highbridge would turn into a bustling hub for pilgrims. But thanks to the nigh endless beastmen raids, folks are too afraid to come within a malm of here. I sold everything I owned to get my venture started, and I'm loath to give it up without making an earnest effort to stick it out. But if things keep going as they are, I'll be bankrupt before the moon is through. Mining won't do me any good, though. No, for my business to survive, I need business. Speaking of which, perhaps you'd like to browse my wares. Spend a bit of coin to help a struggling merchant. Masked man? I'll take your bloody masked man. I know what I said before, but vague rumors are all I've got. If you want to know about them, go and ask the other merchants. I mean, if Thalt did take the Masked Man, that would, that would probably make my job a lot easier. Is it not here? Okay. Must be up above, I guess? Oh, they're all the way up there. Gotcha. So let's start with the one on this side. Multiloquent. Is that the one who speaks multiple languages? I have heard tell of the Masked Devil. Seems he's been appearing not only around Highbridge, but elsewhere about that land, too. Enough folk have reported seeing him to convince me he's more than a figment of the imagination, but little is known about him otherwise. <laughs> Had some songs stuck in my head lately. The Treadable Masked Man. I've heard of him, but only in hushed tones and faint whispers. Said he wears a black hooded robe and looks right suspicious. That's about all I can say, little though it is. I see you over there, impassive merchant. Good adjectives, this quest. Have I seen a masked man wearing a dark robe? No, I haven't. Nor do I wish to. Business is bad enough without shady characters lurking about. Folk have been giving Highbridge a wide berth because of all the Queequera raids. None of the most devout of pilgrims are willing to come here anymore. Hi, Captain. Thank you for coming on this adventure with me. by your expression, I take it you didn't learn much of use? Look, I'm sorry for my rudeness earlier. It's just that things are tough for us merchants at the moment. The quick run rates are so constant, so organized, we're beginning to suspect that someone is orchestrating it all. I tend to put my own welfare first, like most of us do. That doesn't mean I'm a bad person. I promise you to eye out for your masked man. If I see or hear anything, you'll be the first to know. So if someone were coordinating the quick run, where might they be? He borrows information that will surely lead you to La Habra. <laughs> I finally got some honest to God's information on your masked man. Why so confident? Because I saw him with my own two eyes. I was out for an evening stroll, minding my own business, when I noticed a column of smoke rising from a cliff over at Thal's respite. Curious, I took myself there to find a masked man, your masked man, I'm sure of it, standing by a fire. As if in answer, some Queequern appeared soon after, and the group began talking at length. I'm afraid I was too far out of earshot to hear much of anything. After the group had dispersed, an idea came to me. If he were to use this smoldering coal to start a fire, he might be able to start arranging a similar meeting. It'd be dangerous, I shouldn't doubt, but you've proven yourself more than a match for a pack of rats. So what do you think? That's some sound, reliable information, even if they do say what's well, so myself. Well worth all the lingering about you've been doing, wouldn't you say? <laughs> it's always a little funny when you see, like, the... 
DNA of the older structure. Like, there were definitely like two or three more quests here on High Bridge before they started trimming stuff down. So that line there about like, hey, we're worth all that time you wasted, right? Is a lot, like, it seems sort of out of place given that we just did one quest here. But it used to be a lot more uh, dramatic. Even at night when it's foggy, this place just has a cool look about it. Back so soon? Were you able to find any clues leading to your masked man? I mean, there was a guy in, like, kind of a mask, but I don't think it's related. A paper ward inscribed with the prayer to the patron deity of Alamigo, Ralgar. <gasps> the, the scroll! It bears a prayer of Ralgar, the destroyer! In case you're unfamiliar, Ralgar is the garden deity of Alamigo, which is currently under Garlean rule. It is highly uncommon for folk of other nations to revere him. I'd wager my last guild that that your assailant was Alamegan. It seemed this masked man of yours is well connected. I must confess, the merchant in me envies such a diverse network of contacts. That selfsame merchant also senses danger ahead, and darkness besides. Are you certain you'd rather not take things nice and slow here at Highbridge? The Alamegan bandit you had a run-in with is somehow connected to your masked man of mystery. So it stands to reason that if you want to pick up the trail again, you should head towards Little Alamigo over in southern Thanalan. Just so you know what, you, what to expect, the settlement is the favorite. De the settlement is the favorite destination for those refugees who couldn't, well, adapt to life in Uldal. 
The hearts of the denizens are said to be as barren as the wasteland they live in, and for all intents and purposes, it's a lawless place. Be prepared for a not-so-warm welcome. Now, I'm not certain how much help she will be, but it just so happens I have a daughter who has, uh, relocated to Little Alamigo. Her name is Hihira, and it shouldn't hurt to see to seek her out first. And while you have her attention, I'd be obliged if you could send me my love. Not a day goes by that I don't think of her. I suppose this is it, then. I'd hope that you would linger here a while, call some fiends, spend some coin, what have you, but something tells me you're destined for greater things. Wherever it is you end up, I wish you the best. Okay, so where is the little one go? With reference to where I am now. That's in southern Benelon. That's central Benelon, which I think is where I am currently. No, it's not where I am currently. That's quite a hike. Okay, so let's port back to Ulda and then take the steps of fall out. <laughs> so, wild train of thought I had earlier. Um, one of the, like, in-universe swears that they use um, routinely is uh, Nafaka's teats, or Matron's teats. And when we later get to see a character model of that deity, they are stacked. <laughs> and so I just have to wonder, like, were they always like that in all of their portrayals? And so that's where the swear came from? Or did they just, like, use that swear a bunch and suddenly that deity through faith suddenly found themselves taking on that trait <laughs> and then along the same line of inquiry the other uh, swear that gets used pretty often is thal's balls and i just have to wonder if uh null thal's just like got some shit going on down there <laughs> found a new place. Whoa. Alright. Talk about Baron. Hey, can, why do I want to go to home to Ulda? Let's see, the folk are too rustic by half, there are more Pisces than pie, shop, uh, than pie shops, and lizard men are a prowl just a stone's throw away. Can I talk to you? No. If I stand there, you will use to make words? No. Okay. Excuse me, I'm looking for a he hero? Or are you her, ma'am? Hmm? My, yes, is my father. He said what? <sighs> I wish I could be a better daughter to him. It's just that... Oh, I'm sorry. I shouldn't bother you with family matters. But I'm grateful to you for delivering the message. Now then, what brings you here? A masked man. I'm afraid the description doesn't ring any bells, but one of the others may have, here may have seen something. I would recommend you first speak with Gundvald, the leader of the settlement. I must warn you, though, he isn't exactly accommodating to outsiders. What's up, Gundabald? Who are you? State your business and be quick about it. I'm Narbert, sir. I'm looking for a man in a mask. Looking for a masked villain, you say? And why should we help you, pray? Well, if he was here, he's probably causing local trouble as well. You struggle enough without having to answer to the whim of every outsider. You are not welcome here. Be gone. Oh, a short quest. All right. Neat. Cool. All right, well, bye, I guess.
Oh, hey, you're on the Immortal Flames. Do you know what's going on here? Well, I'm an adventurer. I'm Gieselbert, head of security here at Little Old Nico. I heard tell that you had business, the Gundabald. Knowing the bristly old bear, I don't doubt he told you to bugger off. Owing to their hardships, the refugees don't trust anyone but themselves. Not even my man and I... Not even my men and I can get so much as a word of thanks out of them, despite watching the place night and day. But thanks or no, I try to help my fellow man when I can. And you seem a decent sort. If you tell me what's brought you here, it might be as I can lend a hand. On the trail of a mass villain, you say? Huh. Can't say that sounds familiar, but I have men on the lookout for a Amalja to the south of here. If there's been any suspicious activity, they are like to have seen it. I had a mind to take them each a cup of sweet Thandalan tea so as to lift their spirits. If you were to run this little air into my stead, they'd be all the more willing to tell you what they know. Tea delivery service. Nyardbert's on it. Nyardbert never gives up this whole adventuring thing. He'd make a good DoorDash courier. Drop the boat porters. Short the boat. <laughs> what? That was the wrong sound. Oh, someone else did it. <laughs> Alright, cool. <laughs> I pushed the button to get on my chocobo and it played the mount up sound effect for their mount, which I guess they must have been doing like just off screen, but it, it was very confusing. Hello, hello, I come bearing sweet tea. Who the hells are you? Trying to conserve energy here, so leave me alone. A piping hot infusion of freshly picked young Thanalan tea leaves mixed with rich old goat cream and a general spoonful of golden cactuar, holler, ca golden cactuar flower honey. Well, ain't she considerate? My thanks, friend. What's that? A mass villain? Huh. Hiding among the refugees like is not. The compatriots as live here go through go about as though they're dead on their feet. It is near impossible to tell what's on their minds. For all I know, they're all up to no good. I guess that's a fair assessment. Angry River. Great name for a Rogan. <laughs> you there. Are you an Amalja? No? Then carry on. <laughs> Great scouting out here, Angry River. Ah, oh, the sophisticated aroma. It's been forever since I had a drop of sweet that lot. I'm going to enjoy this. What? A masked man? Don't know, don't care. Unless he's got dark, scaly skin, stands ten fulms tall, and has the face of a lizard. And I don't give a mummer's fart. Is the fart of a mummer more... Or less worthwhile than your average soldier fart. Shoo, shoo, don't bother me. If the Amalja overrun us, I'm blaming you. Here, I come bearing tea. For me? You shouldn't have. Sorry? A suspicious masked man. As a matter of fact, I caught a glimpse of someone fitting that description during patrol. Well, I couldn't quite make out whether it was a man or not with the, with the mask and the robe. But assuming it was a he, he was talking with some Alamegans. I assumed he was one of them. To the south lies Amalja territory, not to mention swarms of fell fiends. If you care for life and limb, north is where you'd want to go. Alright. I am going north, but because that's where my quest objective is, not because I value my life. I just want to make sure we're all on the same page here. I do love that line from early on with Mother Mia and being like, I swear to God, if I put two doors, one marked limitless wealth and the other marked certain death, nine out of ten adventurers would take the second, with the tenth one being unable to choose on account of being old on. Hi, you're back. So do my lookouts have a lot to share with you? Huh, this is not much to go by. 
If you're to get any further in your investigations, it seems to be me you'll need the cooperation of the Almegans. For this, you'll need to win their trust, and I won't be an easy task. Okay, so these spectacles are not useful for us at all, but glamour. And they are wearable by all classes, so I might take it just... Yeah, well, actually, let's see. What does Narver look like with the glasses? Just display head here. Huh, zoom in. Nope, not there. <laughs> please, please. They suit him. Yeah. So you're determined to press on with your investigation. I have some advice to offer. As I said before, before you won't get far without the Alamegan's trust. And the best way to win that trust is to get a patron of theirs, someone they respect, to vouch for you. Coin does the talking in Uldav, but the Alamegans are bound by something far stronger, if not as tangible. A common purpose. That purpose is, of course, the liberation of their home from the Garleans. Gundibald belongs to the Alamegan resistance, so your best bet would be someone who's part of the same crew. If you know any well-connected people, you might want to start by asking them. Can I ask the silence? Oh yeah! Speak with Vinfilia! There we are! <laughs> same page, clearly. Alright. Um... Western Benelon the one that's connected? It is. Okay, cool. So... Poof! Bam! I'm at the Waking Sands. After having made more editing work for me. Sail? What? Oh, no, okay. Hold on. Are you? No, that's just the brand new town. Is that? Wow, I don't think I ever put that together. That if you die, the brand new tower looks really similar to one of the later NPCs. Sorry, that threw me for a loop. Because that was... Someone that's not supposed to be in the plot for a long time. <laughs> hey, Vancred. Working hard or hardly working? Ah, oh, Nyarbert. Pray do not concern yourself with my welfare. My current investigation has yielded some curious results, and at present I am pondering how best to proceed. I think... I've already done a reading of that line. Hey, Minfilia. So, I got told that I need to find someone who has a connection with the Alamegan Resistance, and, like, that there I should try and find someone who has, like, a bunch of friends and connections. So, like, do you know anybody? Welcome back, Nyarbert. How fair is the investigation? I literally just told you. I see. Given all they have suffered, it is of little wonder the Alamegan refugees have lost faith in their fellow man. They have had their homeland taken from them, and for the past two decades have had to see it remain in the enemy's clutches. To compound matters, none of the three city-states have the means to take in all those who were displaced. As a result, a great many Alamegans now live on the margins of society, suffering poverty and discrimination. 
<sighs> a bit more could be done to ease their hardships. I fear that nothing short of reclaiming their homeland would be a lasting solution. But let us deal with one problem at a time. Returning to the matter of your investigation, it just so happens there is an Alamegan native among the Scions. It should be I should be pleased to introduce him to you. Was oh, this when I get formally introduced to Arnvald? Hell yeah. Your all vegan command comrade <laughs> is named Horrible. Okay, not the one I thought. I've got quite a few of them then. He joined our cause in the hopes that he might find a way to liberate his homeland. While he spares no effort towards that endeavor, I have no doubt that he would be glad to assist you. If I recall correctly, Harbert is currently between missions. Try looking for him in the storage area. I know they mean that's like just where he's hanging out, but I do like the idea of being like, yes, no, sometimes we have additional scions, and when they're not on missions, we just keep them in storage. Don't worry, the box has air holes. <laughs> Harbert. Pleasure. It is Nyarbertia, the Scion's rising star. Is that what I can do for you? You wish to win the trust of the people of Little Alamigo? That is a daunting task, my friend, even for our own countrymen. I'd like nothing more than to help, but I'm afraid my name no longer carries weight with that lot. I used to be a member of the Alamegan Resistance, you see, but I left in favor of joining the Scion's. Though my allegiance may have shifted, my purpose remains ever the same, the liberation of El Amigo. Yet whatever my reasons were, I abandoned my comrades, and they'll have nothing to do with me. Now, while I may have no more friends in the Resistance, I know someone who does. Her name is Albreda, and she's a resident of Corrigno. Say my name when you meet her, and she won't lead you astray. And that's Haribert, or Haribert? That's the thing you said before. Okay, well, let's warp on over to Quarry Mill. It's always so funny, like, what bits of your brain are trained to do, like, to recognize patterns and so forth. Like, even just quickly opening that menu, navigating the thing and pushing the button, I immediately noticed that the cost for this was 413, Gale. Because, of course, I would. <laughs> eh? You want me to introduce you to the Resistance? <laughs> Why the hell should I do that? Give me just one reason. Uh, Har Harbert asked, I think. Is, is that a good reason? Uh, Harbert sent you? Get that worthless whore son! He abandons his comrades, his woman, and now he's the gall to ask me for a favor? It's simply incredible. I just... I mean... <sighs> uh, I realized Harbert was only doing what he felt was right. He's a good man, and if he trusts you, then that's all I need to know. You see that bloke there? That's Mafria, the captain of the Resistance. I hope he can give you what you need. That is a powerful look, you two. What's your deal, Fairland? Some of ours have had to remain outside the hamlet. But they're hardened soldiers, all, and no stranger to discomfort, but it's a trying experience being in a place that loves you not. Okay. My friend, you stopped tending to a wounded brother. I am Mefred, a proud man of the Alamegan Resistance. What business do you have with me, adventurer? Captain, it's Galleon, sir. His wound's gone and festered, and he's burning up. I don't think he's got much time. God damn it! He asked the villagers for aid, got on my knees and begged, but they refused to lift a finger. If Galleon dies, his blood is on their hands. These quarry mill cravens would turn a blind eye to our plight. But they might listen to Albreda. I fear my anger will prevent me from rightly convincing anyone at the moment. I realize we scarce know each other, but this is a matter of life and death. Please, adventurer, go to her and try. Yeah, 
Hey, uh, so I, I know we just met like a minute ago, but do you know why this man's being left to die slowly to a infected wound? One of Mefford's is in bad shape, you say? I'm... I'm sorry, but there's not I can do. I want to help, truly, I do. I'm a countryman, after all. That doesn't mean going against the Elemental's will. I've been at Quarrymel long enough to know how right terrible this be beings can be. Couldn't forgive myself if everyone gets banished because of me. If there's anyone who, here, if there's anyone who can help you, it would be Charlene, the Hamlet's resident here. You take the matter to her, might be as she'll listen. Oh, I wouldn't get my hopes up. Oh, man, I'm not a conjurer this time, so I can't just pull rank. <laughs> You wish to aid the Alamegans. You're possessed of a kind heart adventurer, but I'm afraid I have not the authority to grant you your wish. The authority belongs only to the Elementals, eternal guardians of the Twelveswood. All outsiders, be they babes of the breast or men grown, are judged of a knight whether they may have a place beneath the boughs. Alas, the Alamegans' petition has been denied. Harsh though it may seem, they do not have leave to receive the boot of the wood's bounty. Ever has it been since time immemorial, and ever shall it be. Okay, so like, what's the plan though then? Oh, okay, I guess I, you're just gonna ignore me now. Neat. Hey, Mefred. Uh, no dice. Maybe we can do something about it elsewhere? That's how it is to be then? Ugh, the bloody hair might as well kill Galleon herself. Spit on the elementals and spit on their bloody will! I cannot wait until the resistance is free of this place. Oh, I don't have the exact quest count here, but I think we are round about halfway through ARR now. Which just kind of a neat little benchmark. I led my men to Quarry, Quarry Mill, hoping to find refuge. Instead, we found indifference. The cold-blooded bastards here want us out, and I can't oblige them soon enough. The problem is, some mine aren't fit to travel. Hell's Galleon can't even stand. As you well know, the people of this accursed hamlet won't help us, so I've got no choice but to turn to you, adventurer. In my homeland, long antelope horn is a traditional remedy with poison purging properties. If you could bring me, say, four horns, I'd forever be in your debt. I have a hunch that, like, killing animals in the woods is, like, exactly the type of woods bounty that they were trying to, uh, keep controlled. Like, I'm gonna do it anyway, but that is definitely a thought that I'm having. <laughs> like, you might want to, like, hold out or whatever, and be like, Hey, Alchemist Guild, give me a thing so I can help treat this person. Then, they'd be hard-pressed to be like, No, let this person die for no reason. But, like, going out and killing things in their woods is, uh... I think this does technically make me a poacher, but whatever. Ah, you're back! Tell me you've got four horns with you. This particular specimen is about almost twice as long as a normal horn. 
how it grew to the size in a single season is baffling. You're a godsend adventurer. Praise Ralgar, there's at least one man in this place who gives a damn. Now we just need to find a way to prepare them. You wouldn't happen to know a man named Buskron, would you? Some comrades of mine told me about him once. He said he never turns away folks in need, no matter where they're from. Seeing as he runs a tavern, he'd just like to have the, the tools to make the medicine. I'd be grateful if you could take the horns over to him and have them ground down. When that's done, bring the powder back and give it to Faramund here. Godspeed. Alright. Let's go, Kaiba. We got errands to run. Life or death errands. Posing out in the woods. Yep, just posing out in the woods. Cool. Puskaron! Can you help grind these horns? Also, sorry I brought Kaiba inside. Well, Nyardbert, ever a sight from sore eyes. How fares the adventuring? Rolling in the coin like there's no tomorrow, no doubt. <laughs> I mean, more than I thought, but mostly because of that random dude that was here last time we talked. <laughs> hmm? You got something to show me? Here, can you, can you grind these? Well, these look like good old antelope horns. You can ground down to make a medicine, you say? Here's a better idea. I'll use some of the stuff I have in my stores. I'm no stranger to the remedy. Al Megan friend once used it to treat my festering wound years and years ago. Safe to say, he saved my life. What's that? This is for an Al Megan soldier in Quarimel. <laughs> so it comes full circle. Well, I hope that I hope it helps the poor sod as needs it. Oh, and don't worry your little head off about payment. I still owe you a great deal more than you owe me. Uh, owe me, I reckon. Cards so I can come challenge Buscarone. There's a card minigame in this that like a bunch of random stuff drops cards. So I went out of my way to unlock it, which like means that I'll just get drop some dungeons and stuff occasionally and that'll be enough to like participate from time to time. But it also means that a whole bunch of NPCs now have that little card symbol above their head taunting me, knowing I could play Trouble Dryad with them. <laughs> Not to be confused with that card symbol over their head. <laughs> Farmond, I come bearing medicine. It's well you returned. Have you the medicine for our brother? I want us to believe, Buscarone, this sour-smelling paste from Alamigo will stop the wound from festering. Gods bless you, adventurer. I'll see that Galleon receives tra treatment at once. Hopefully this will allow the captain to rest easier. There's been a terrible burden on him trying to keep every man alive. You've done us a great kindness, friend. Adventurer! Galleon has gone missing. He's nowhere to be found. He shouldn't be walking about, not with those wounds. He doesn't get the proper medicine and rest. His condition's likely to deteriorate to, deteriorate to where it was before. Or worse. We need you to help us find him, and quickly. Start by asking Albreda. Might be as the woman's seen something. Hey, Albreda. Sorry to bother you again. Have you seen Gal Galleon? Ah, oh, finally. It's about time you came asking about Galleon. I watched him leave Quarry Mill some time ago, and he left me this sealed letter before he went off. It made me swear not to open it until someone came asking. My brothers, I cannot bear to be a burden any longer. This is why I must leave you all. Do not worry for me. Just find your way safely to little Alamigo. Ugh, blast it. What that I know what he was thinking, and I've stopped this falling myself. The love Galleon bears for his brothers is so strong, he's willing to sacrifice himself for them. Make no mistake, entering the wood in his weakened state is suicide. Oh, 
I was about to run out after, but I guess I need to talk to Mufried first. Out in the wilds? Alone? That fool, the great big sentimental fool. My men and I will scour the woods for Galleon. Please help us find him before something terrible happens. Onward, Kaiba. Further errands abound. Life or death errands. <laughs> And, like, even though the medicine thing was high stakes, it, it wasn't that out of place to call it an errand. It is very, like, funny and not super funny to be like, yeah, no, saving this dude's life from stopping you to commit suicide, you know, an errand. I shot a goblin. That is, in fact, a goblin. Wow. Probably should have waited for you to attack me before I attacked you, but, uh, here we are. I got it, Galleon. Why was that goblin trying to beat you up? Like, just cuz? Galleon! Captain, but why? You should all be on your way. Who do you take us for? We're Alamegans! Alamegans never forsake one another. Hardships be damned. Remember the oath we swore, goddammit. The oath to reclaim our homeland. We'll set foot on Alamegan soil again. Together. Or not at all. Do you understand me? Yes, sir. Good. Let's return to our brothers. Oh, don't even think that you'll get off lightly. As soon as you're healed, I'll give you such a thorough thrashing you'll wish we didn't find you. I can't thank you enough for saving Galleon. I'll see you back at Corbin. Galleon's expected to make a full recovery. We'll linger here till he's strong enough to take to the road again. As much as I mislike this place, beggars can't be choosers. Choose? Choose. Now that things are relatively settled, I seem to recall that you wanted something from me. You've proven a true friend to my people. Ask me of anything and it's yours, so long as it's mine to give. The cooperation of the people of Lilla Amigo. That's all? Far be it for me to question your desires, of course. Very well, I will provide you with a letter to show to Gunvald. The old bear was my mentor when I first joined the Resistance. He's intimidating to those who don't know him, but he takes care of his own. I have no doubt that he will do all in his power to aid you. The weed number. Come bearing letter. 
Why have you returned? You're not welcome here. I thought I made that clear. A quickly drawn up letter addressed to one Gundwald from Mefred. Here you go, or Mefred. You you spoke of Mefred. It's been so long since I last heard from him. I feared him dead. Twill be praised. Wherever you are, Mefred sees you as a friend, and any friend of Mefred is a friend of mine. I know of this masked stranger you seek and will tell you what I can. is willing to share with you what he knows of the Masked Stranger. An outsider resembling your Masked Stranger has reportedly been appearing near Little Alamigo of late. What's more, it seems that some of our young bloods are meeting him in secret. No doubt you'll want to question them about their tri about their trysts, but they are not like to yield the information readily to an outsider. If you tell them I sent you, though, they may well feel obligated to talk. Alright, let's go talk to the Utes. Baltar, I've been sent by Gundabald. Talk to me. A masked man? Now I know what you're talking about. I ain't done nothing wrong, so leave me be. Right, right, but G Gundabald said... Okay, or, or not. Alright, fine. Hey, hey, bud. Uh, Gund Gundabald told me to talk to you. G Gundabald sent you? I, uh... Listen, I told them it was a bad idea. All that trip about believing the masked man and... Uh oh you don't know anything about this. Why did you say so to start with? You can't throw the old bear's name around like that and expect me not to think I'm in for it. Yardbird. Yardbird, let them talk. Why did you do that, Yardbird? Don't, don't look away. Look over here. Yeah, I know. I know. It's hard. But still, like, when they, when they start dumping the information, act like you know what they're talking about, at least until they finish talking. Okay, let's go continue the interrogation. It's okay, I'm not mad. Honestly, the one thing about the Chocobo Companion System that makes me sad is that we can't have a mage Chocobo. Like, we do a healer Chocobo. But you can't just get a Chocobo that's like throwing fire balls and shit. still inside. Tailbot. There's a bunch been skulking about right suspicious like, but I got nothing to do with them. I have trouble when I seize it, and, there ain't, and that there's trouble. Mark me words. Hey, Sifrid, what you got for me? What? I haven't been meeting any masked men lately. Huh, let's see. Nope, can't say I have. I'll be sure to tell all my friends you're looking for him. Don't know whether that was meant to be you assisting or you being like, well, you blew your cover now. You idiot. You dumb little head empty cat boy. 
What you doing out here trying to do spycraft shit? Gundervald, I talked to them, and like one or two of them was vaguely helpful. So you have indeed confirmed my suspicions about a masked man. That is most troubling. Whatever the young ones are scheming, it can lead to no good end. There's an anger inside them. I can see it in their eyes. I ought to know, for it once burned within me as well. Two decades ago, that same anger drove me and my brothers to rise against the despot who ruled Alamigo. Naught would do but to depose him and usher in a revolution. Well, we got our revolution, all right, but it cost us our freedom. Blinded by our hate, we didn't realize that we'd been dancing to the Empire's tune. By the time we did, it was too late. Alamigo had fallen. There are times when a man must be patient. Now is such a time, though the young ones know this not. Unless we intervene, they are, they are like to commit great folly. If you learn aught of their plans, I would thank you to bring word to me. Ramfing has a secret message for me. Hey! Adventurer, you done talking with the old bear? Got a message for, me, for you from Wilred. Glad something of a leader among the young ones here. He's impressed that you've won over Gundervald and wants a word with you. Says he'll be waiting over at the craggy area north of here. You know, to ambush you, probably. Like the ambush spot? That spot where you go and you're like, man, this would be a great place for an ambush? That's where he wants to meet you. This is me assuming. I don't actually remember if that's the case, but... mechanic here. So you see that eye there? Um, that means that it is a directional attack that only affects you if you're looking at it. Like if, if Nyarbert is facing you, is when it'll affect them. Um, these creatures, being relatively low level enemies, also have the rider of, and also are within their zone of effect, which is pretty small, and it's easy enough to just walk out of it. But if I wanted to, I could stay in that zone of effect and just look away and still not be affected. The next one that comes up, I'll show you. Oh, or it just won't. That works too. Stare thing at me. So do the stare. No, not that one. The other one. Okay, see, so yeah, I'm in the AOE still, but I'm looking away. And no effect.
fights, yeah. That, that'll become more complicated and more important in later fights, but it's interesting to see the, the uh, ability seeded this early. But I guess it's not that much earlier than where it actually comes up like, in a dungeon. Hey, well, Rip. So, are, are you going to get people to ambush me, or are we going to get ambushed collectively? Thanks for coming, friend. Just no ordinary outsider can gain the trust of the old bear. So I wanted to meet you, discuss something in private. Tell me, why are you snooping about? Did the Empire send you, or someone else? Quarrel got your tongue? <laughs> no matter. Whoever it is you work for, your meddling ends here. Get him! You're ambushing me? At Ambush Rock? Where's the rest of them? Bullrid? The, the rest of them? Were you really just gonna ambush me with like two people? Yeah, you're stronger than you look. This changes nothing. Threaten us, beat us bloody all you like, but nothing short of death can make us give up our fight. What made you think that was even remotely what I'm here for? We're going to obtain the power to bring down the Empire, and with it, we'll reclaim our homeland. Okay, bye. Um, I don't know what prompted this, but just the thought. Uh, earlier on, we were talking about how, like, the Queen Quarren or Beast Tribe are, like, causing trouble and stuff. Minor spoiler, I guess. We never get to see a primal for the Queen Quarren. Maybe they're just not a religious people, but it would be pretty cool to have gotten a chance to fight them and they just they never really become important they're always just sort of there around the edges Attacked by Wilbur and his cronies? Well, I mean, attacked by his cronies. Wilbur just sort of stood there menacingly. They would go to such lengths for the sake of this plan of theirs. Left to their own devices, the young fools are like to harm others, if not themselves, who must uncover their agenda and put an end to this madness. Ooh, cute shirt. Yeah, that's a look. I don't know if I like it quite as much as that armor, but it's not bad. Can I... I can't put it up on my forehead. I know that's like a trope of having the goggles on your forehead, so I figured it was worth a look. <laughs> Big trouble in Little Alamigo. Ooh, a cutscene. Wilfred mentioned obtaining the power to bring down the Empire. Of what power could he be speaking? Good. Good to bolt. Uh, I... I... Oh, you're not injured. You're just running. Princess Liana, God's preserve. What happened? I was out foraging. When the corpse brigade came, they took me to their hideout and they... They... Uh, a whole while they laughed at me. They said that I suffer because I cling on to hope. Is it wrong to dream of hope? Is it wrong to call ourselves Alamegans? Do not heed such poisonous notions, child. Our dreams are what sustain us. Be strong, I swear to you. Those villains will answer for their crimes in due time. But tell me, does anyone else know this? Wilred, he saw me outside. He was so angry. I must tend to Bertiliana. In the meantime, I need you to find out what the young ones make of this. I fear that they may do something rash.
Sorry, I cut you off earlier, Hamfring. What did you have something to say about the Corpse Brigade? No, you have a quest now. I can't get you to repeat it. Okay, well, hope it wasn't important. What? There are five youths to ascertain the attentions of? And this is such a small little bubble? That's a dense population of youths. Oh, there's a second bubble. Okay, that makes more sense. Map is on rock. did to Bertoliana is unforgivable, and to think they look down on us. Well, I'll suffer this humiliation no more. I'm with Willard to the bitter end. I'm not afraid of a few lizards. Wait, I thought the Corpse Brigade were human. I know Zonrock is where the Amalja are, but... Riled youth. And if this plan succeeds, we'll have the power to lay the Empire low, to change the world for the better. Might be as Gundabald's content to eke out an existence in this musty old cave, but I'll be damned if I'm going to spend the rest of my life here. Now, where in that seven hells did I put that bloody map? I just put the plan together. This is really bad. O oh, mighty Ralgar, Lord of Destruction, we implore you, lend us your strength and put an end to the suffering of your people. <laughs> Here to interfere again. Well, you're too late. Our plan is already in motion. Once we have the crystals, our enemies will pay for their crimes, and no one will dare oppress us ever again. You're going to summon one of the twelve, like Ifrit got summoned. That is bad. I have a hunch that when someone angry summons something called Ralgar the Destroyer, uh, we might not get a peaceful outcome. Gone. The whole lot of them? It is as I feared. They need to take matters into their own hands. But what exactly is it that they mean to do? How was your use of seeing the blade dulled and nicked and the half horn smooth? A detailed map of the Amalgia stronghold in southern Panalon. What's this? A hunting knife and a map of Zonrock? Wait, you said Wilverd spoke of crystals, did you not? But they couldn't possibly mean to. By the gods, this is rank madness. The young fools are untrained and unblooded all. They have no notion how dangerous the Amalgia are. They'll be butchered before they get within a hundred yards of the crystal. They're headed east. If we hurry, we may find them. We may find them yet before it is too late.
What's the... Hunting log for the Grand Company only gives seals? Oh, it does. It doesn't give experience. That's kind of annoying, but whatever. Oh, okay, this is an instance. It's Marauder time. Willerid, did no others survive? This is all wrong. Yeah, the crystals was supposed to be the start. We are going to reclaim our homeland. We were... We... Pull yourself together, lad. We were going to be making an offering of crystals to Ralgar to summon him. Just like the masked man taught us. We plotted to sneak into Sandrak and make off with the lizard men's cash. But, but they caught us. And... And... So many dead. Gods forgive me. Heathens. You shall pay for your crimes with your souls. I regret our young one's transgressions, but a soul is too high a price for youth little folly. For all their failings, they are the hope of the Alamegan people. This hope I will guard with my life. Skill at arms is impressive, adventurer. Our wayward youths could learn much from a man like you. The battle is won, but it would be unwise to linger here. Let us return to little Alamigo. Wait, we've come all this way. We have to get the crystals. They're right there, ripe for the picking. Have you learned nothing, Wilred? Did you not see those tempered wretches? Such is the fate of those who are touched by a god. Is that what you desire for yourself and your friends? What? No one said anything about... The masked man told us we could defeat the Empire if we summoned Ralgar. He, he swore. Enough. I will hear the rest of this story, ta this sorry tale, back in Little Alamigo. I dare say Nyarbert will wish to hear it as well. All right, Kaiba, let's head back. Oh, we're closer than I thought. Wow, you guys settled real close to Sun Rock. I don't know if that means you're real confident or real desperate. Probably both.
No more lies, Wilred. Tell us everything. I was outside with the others when he appeared, the masked stranger. He told us about summoning Ralgar, about using crystals, and then just... vanished. We never saw him again. I wanted so desperately to believe that we could raise ourselves from the squalor. I never stopped to question his motives. But I should have known. There's no solution. Nothing we could do to change our lot. Our people are doomed to live and die like beasts. Listen to me, Wilred. Our home may be lost to us, but it takes more than stones and mortar to define who we are. No matter where we may be, Alamigo lives on within all us within us all. It is for you to decide what to make of this legacy, but whatever you choose to do with your life, never forget that you owe it to this adventurer, an outsider. I... I won't, I promise. Thank you for saving me, and sorry I tried to kill you. I get that a lot. <laughs> My thanks as well, friend. It gives us hope to know that there are kind souls such as you out there. Little El Amigo may not have much in the way of comfort, but you will always be welcome here. So what now? It's like the guy only showed up once. Back to square one, fair enough. And one wants to wish you well in your investigation. Would that we had more information to offer, but what Wilrid told you is the extent of our knowledge of the Masked Stranger. Left unchecked, that man will bring about great pain and suffering. I pray that you'll find and put a swift end to the creature, for the sake of the young ones who died by his poisoned words. Alright, back to Minvilia. to switch off with Marauder and catch another experience before, but whatever, it's not like it's a huge level gap. What's next, Moonvillia? Welcome back, Nyardbert. I'm reliably informed the investigation took you to Quarry Mill and Little Alamigo. So tell me, were you able to learn aught of La Habrea? Wait, so you... I asked you for contact in Little Alamigo, and you told me the guy who comes from Quarry Mill. Like, okay, never mind. Uh, a little, I know that he showed up and tried to coax some kids into summoning a god. Planted the knowledge of summoning in impressionable young minds, you say? Precisely the kind of deception the Asians would employ. While many of the ills that ail the land can be attributed to the calamity, some are being brought about by a malign will. We must needs delve deeper into this, while things remain quiet on the primal front. 
All work and no play, Nickman Philia Adol Scion. Hmm? Did you say something? N nothing, my lady. Oh, goodbye. <laughs> <sighs> Mayhap we ought to rest a while before speaking further of the investigation. Alright, you know what? I will take that as uh, my marching orders for today. I am going to wrap up for now. Uh, we will be back sometime soon. Nyarbert will return in Terror at Falgord. Falgord. Probably also be doing a bunch of class quests soon. But yeah, see you next time. Bye.